the time has come for my people to go. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's what the people demand, and we're gonna keep fighting till we get that land. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's time to rise to get what we want, we got to organize. Blessings to everyone watching. I'm Jesse here with Winford, and we are repping the All African People's Revolutionary Party. The objective of the All African People's Revolutionary Party is the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. We plan on continuing this work so that we get the masses of people to organize. Um, and today, in this episode of Pantsula Podcast, our podcast here, we're going to talk about honoring the unsung comrades. Uh, we know often in media today, there's a lot of talk about MLK, who is a comrade and our ancestor, who we do very much should honor. But often his radical process is not talked about. We don't know the details of just how many of our people have struggled and fought against the system. And we aim to just talk about some of the people that have done that and just bring this conversation out so that you can study we're also in this process of studying, obviously, learning more about people who have fought for our liberation and who continue to fight. So with that, uh, I'll pass it on to Winford. Yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. So uh, I guess the main, I think this is like a preface, uh, like remember that like all of us are still in the process of learning. Uh, so like we're learning so many stuff about these people and about the things that they've been doing. Uh, so we're trying to focus more so on their ideas and the arguments that they push for and how they've contributed to uh, Pan-Africanism. Um, so the first one we have in mind is uh, Dr. John Henry Clark. Uh, he was a historian, professor, and pioneer in the field of creating Pan-African studies, uh, like born in Alabama and raised in Georgia in 1915. Uh, he moved to, well, he, he moved on uh, from this earth in July of 1998. Uh, and so what pushed him to study African history is as a child in Sunday school, he noticed that while there are many uh, Bible stories that happened in Africa, he, in the Bible itself, he saw no African people in the printed and illustrated Sunday school lessons. Mm. Uh, so he wanted to learn more about the issue. Uh, to understand why the Bible is set in Africa, but the images in the Bible display no African people. Um, wow. And that's a great way to start. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I come yeah. from the church and, you know, I can see that definitely still active today, you know, and you often hear people say, oh, it doesn't matter. And it's like, well, if it didn't matter, then why not show the accurate historical exactly of what it was like? So that's that's yeah. awesome that he went into it for that reason alone, because as we know, just studying history, you know, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, all were both birthed from Africa. So it would we should be, be knowing what happened in those African societies Absolutely. while they are doing their stuff. Yeah. And so he was heavily influenced and inspired by, uh, among like hordes of uh, other Pan-Africans, uh, Sheikh Antadia. Uh, a writer who completed like hordes of research on African history, uh, Marcus Garvey, the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and the African Communities League, and uh, Arturo Alfonso Schomburg, uh, who was his mentor and who guided him to analyze European history uh, so he could see the inconsistencies and in what was uh, currently given to him mm -hmm. uh, and to learn about African culture and uh, learn about it at its roots. Wow. And again, somebody who I'm sure a lot of people have not heard of. Um, I've heard that name, but I didn't know the history. But I know, mm -hmm. again, when we hear even familiar names like Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, yeah. you know, it's never the depth of their analysis. It's always just usually, oh, yeah, they were out in the streets. They, they wanted Absolutely. white people and black people. <laughs> In the case of Martin Luther yeah. King, of course, that's the only thing we hear is that, yeah, he just wanted people to get over racism. They don't talk about him organizing mm -hmm. a people's strike, um, making mm -hmm. sure a, pe a poor people's march. 
um, talking about how, you know, America's military and U.S. imperialism is the biggest conveyor of evil. Like, this is things, Martin Luther King, these are the things we don't hear mm-hmm. about. Um, but yeah. even hearing, you know, this brother and just seeing the things he's done. And I feel like one of the reasons we don't hear about that is because they're aware it's going to cause that awakening, of course. It'll mm-hmm. encourage people to not settle for the crimes that were often given. And we don't, and even for MLK, we don't uh, typically hear about the people who mentored him, the people who he worked right. with, and then the people that he mentored in itself. Like, there's usually, like, a, it's not just that one individual usually, it's like a, like, a chain link of, like, people, like, connecting with each other and building and organizing, like, with and among each other. Right. So, and that's the, I mean, in capitalism, again, it's just about that individual pursuit. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not about the collective, whereas we know that the collective is what it's all about. I mean, even in doing yeah. this organizing work, you're going to be talking to people, you're going to disagree, but you're going to have that collective organism, which is going to allow that growth. You can't do it on your own, really. I mean, I'm learning that more and more <laughs> as I uh, do this work. Yeah. And capitalism <laughs> just gives you that myth that, yeah, you can do it on your own because yeah. this person is done on his own. And it's like, there's a team, there's a you know, yeah. system that... If you try to do things on your own, uh, like the systems are built to, to fight against that. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, these are clear things, but I think the system... In itself is very aware mm-hmm. of people's ability. Like even how we we're in it, like I'm sure you saw as soon as it was February first, all the social media platforms yeah. went straight black, you know, history month. You know, history, <laughs> this is the time. It's like the shortest day, yeah. the shortest month of the year. But still a significant I mean, I obviously love that mm-hmm. our ancestors have done what they've done, but to see how capitalism tries to reward that, like even putting the idea of having Harriet Tubman on a twenty dollar bill is yeah. just like we're not helping out any of her descendants. <laughs> can't answer like the real needs of the people, but you're yeah. gonna give us the symbolism of oh, here she is on a twenty dollar bill, which is that just says everything about what this system designs mm-hmm. to do. Like, um, and so like as for uh, Dr. Clark, like uh, the people that he worked with, well, so like he had like those three mentors and like uh sources of inspiration uh and uh alongside that like he worked like he was like very close friends with malcolm x and they like exchanged dialogue like pretty frequently about how to like push for like african uh, liberation and freedom uh and like self-dependency and he also mentored uh kwame nkrumah before he like helped fight for independence and then later on, uh, worked with Nkrumah in his new government. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and that's something, I mean, those two people alone, Malcolm X. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, wow. That's, that, that just tells you his pedigree of yeah. the work he was putting in. I mean, and somebody we can learn from. Again, it's not, these are people who are not talked about generally. You're not going to hear their names. Um, but just you kind of have to be in certain circles to know them. Right. Exactly. That's intentional. I mean, it's intentional that we're given that same messaging because mm-hmm. when you do the work and you study and you realize, oh no, there's a bunch of people that have been doing this thing together, together, right? In a process, not just you know alone climbing some ladder. It's like no, they're they're with their brothers and sisters, and mm-hmm. it's a continual fight. Obviously, I mean that's the other side to it. It's like Asada Shakur, who's another um, ancestor who. Who's still here, um, actually, in Cuba, living, still doing the work. Mm-hmm. Um, someone, <laughs> still alive. right, who's still, I believe, on the most wanted list from America. Mm-hmm. So it tells yeah. you what they think of people who are actually going against the system. Like, they're not going to stop targeting. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't, I think, like, uh, I think for me, it was especially surprising finding out how close, like, Nkrumah and Malcolm X were linked to each other. Like literally talking to the t- talking to and working with the same exact person who was like giving them advice and guidance, and like how they're able to apply that in like different ways for like uh, different groups of people. Yeah, that's still be effective. And Malcolm X, especially as he when he tr- he had this transformation, he seemed mm-hmm. 
just so concerned about having Africans in America realize that this experience is not dislocated. Like exactly. everyone just thinks that it's just us in America. It's like, no, the enemy, is, <laughs> it don't matter where you are, the enemy is there. Like, and They're Malcolm, doing the same thing to, to the people in the, across the sea too. Right. And he, and he reminded people of that because, and it's just amazing because a lot of people still have that sentiment. Like we think, oh, it's just us. If mm-hmm. it's George Floyd, there's a George Floyd and any, you know, occupied, when you have a cellular colony like America mm-hmm. or even in Canada, you know, the same situations happen. Um, so and Malcolm X just did an amazing job at bringing that to light and his talks with, exactly. him, uh, I'm sure it was really, that just changed his life as well because he realized we have to bring it back to Africa. Like this is Africa. Like we are Africans in America <laughs> oppressed, you know. We're still African. Right. Yeah, I think he was, he was one of the people that helped uh, push the idea that, like, uh, at least for, like, our identity, we still need to have it rooted in, like, a physical space and land, mm-hmm. uh, not just, like, an idea. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's and we come from the richest continent um, mm-hmm. in the world, you know. <laughs> it's the reason why America is what it is, is because it's, it's the biggest thief, yeah, well, Therese said, like, it, you, of course, it's the richest country. It's the biggest thief in the world. So, like, when you think of all of what Africa produces and just how all of that is just being sucked ripped here and away. ripped away, um, and people think that we're the best, not having that historical, like, literally <laughs> being brainwashed through television and movies and propaganda and just everything 24 7, just reminding you of this memory that did, didn't happen. Like, Amer- mm-hmm. what is America besides just this genocidal, like, the things that have happened on this soil, this land that belongs mm-hmm. to the Native American, of the indigenous people, they not even being in the picture. Like, when you even think of how we speak of America, it's always mm-hmm. dislocated from the indigenous people. It's like, oh, it's the red, white, and blue. Yeah, definitely. And to some extent, like, there's a lot of literature and a lot of, like, knowledge that we in america don't even have access to so like i i know that like at least with how publishing companies can work in the u.s like uh there's a lot of like african uh th- well there's a lot of african pub- publishing companies that are like based in africa mm-hmm. but like when you're looking at like u.s libraries like it's either going to be like really rare and cost like a thousand dollars to get the book <laughs> somehow <laughs> And see, that seems like, and I believe that's an intentional thing, because mm-hmm. I remember reading an article suggesting, I mean, it really broke down how even museums, like mm-hmm. everything in the system is literally corresponding to the capitalist system. And yeah. they're not going to show you artifacts or memorabilia that shows people revolting. Or if, if they do, it's going to be revised or refurbished. Curated. Yeah, curated. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> You're not going to have your self determination there on the platform. It's like it's yeah. going to always be mixed in with another narrator, um, mm-hmm. and that just goes to show you like we can't depend on the system to tell our story because mm-hmm. they're going to tell the story wrong. We have to independently or join an organization. That's the first thing. Join an organization mm-hmm. so that you can have that process. You can develop that analysis so that you don't depend on you know, state propaganda to inform you because they're not going to inform you of, you know, what direction yeah. is needed to be taken. Exactly. So. Yeah. And so, like, th- yeah, this is, like, really a lot of what, uh, like, Dr. Clark was preaching. Like, uh, at least a good way to introduce yourself to him. Uh, there is this, like, documentary called, well, there's this interview of him called A Great and Mighty Walk. Uh, it's like available for free on YouTube. Nice. So like if you have the time to check it out, it's like definitely a good listen. We'll definitely add it in the description so that you guys can yeah. watch it. Yeah, that's, I'm definitely going to watch it because I haven't seen it. So. Yeah. In preparation mm-hmm. for this podcast, I was thinking of uh, other comrades and I thought of Winnie Mandela, who obviously everyone knows is um, Nelson Mandela's wife. But she was someone who just went further, in my opinion, in a mm-hmm. sense. Like she... Is a reason why they're not talking about her <laughs> because you know she had a, yeah. a fire to her that is not 
often, all right, anytime we speak of this type of flame is usually all, oh, they're they too radical. But she was like, no, I'm not going to compromise. Like, I'm going to, I want to read one of the quotes she said back when apartheid yeah. was going on, where she said, um, if anything goes wrong, I will be the first to go back to the bush and take arms and fight. Because um, there was that <laughs> negotiation, and she's like, okay, I'm going to be paying attention to this negotiation. I'm not going to just accept it and you know, praise because if there's yeah. anything that's going wrong with this, I'm going <laughs> out. Like I, I'm out. There. You know, it's not yeah. like we can just hold hands with our oppressor. And it just that kind of insight and tenacity that she had for the rest of her life, even though she was being spied and ostracized, and you know, mm -hmm. all of the FBI conspiring against her with her friends and stuff. She had some, and under the constant fear of death. Yes, always under the constant fear of death, and just being watched all the time and having your mm -hmm. friends betray you because they're being, I mean, th this is what the FBI does, uh, you know, conspire all of these conspiracies. And, but the fact that she maintained that tenacity and she didn't compromise, she was just unprincipled. Um, that's a comrade we should always honor and acknowledge mm -hmm. because we don't see that often. We see a lot of, you know, we give in to the, okay, we'll see what the system offers, but yeah. It's one of those things that's like just like absolutely terrifying, but when you see somebody doing it, it's like, yeah, this sister's on the right track. <laughs> right, exactly, and it, it's a motivation because it's it's something that we're gonna obviously face within our organizing organizing work. We see just the the terror. The media makes it seem as if if you go along this path, there's a destiny for you. Like even if yeah. you think of how Malcolm X was assassinated and just all of the freedom fighters are usually taken out in a public way. It's mm -hmm. like they have, they're have they trying to say something. Like they're saying, yo, if you do this, if you stand up against us, this is what's going to happen. But yeah. that can't, like this revolution can't be stopped. Like you might kill the person, but I forget who actually had that quote, but um, they seen a revolution. You know what I'm speaking of, right? Like, but it's like, yeah, revolution. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm thinking of a name, but then I don't want to get I don't wrong. If it's the wrong it. name, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's just, let's just keep it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's a very true sentiment. Like, the yeah. revolution, you can't stop this. Like, we go, we go fight. We go fight. Yeah. Even when we have these disagreements, that's what just um, ideological struggle is. You know, you struggle through them so that you get to some. Um, form of a destiny, but yeah, it's it's something to see how the forces attack daily, and it's all done to just make us feel like we can't. But we mm -hmm. have ancestors like you know the ones we're mentioning that have done the work and are continuing. Yeah, I guess speaking of like uh, I guess fighting for Africa, like another name is another person is uh. Mitty Gordon. So her full name is like Mitty Maud Lena Gordon. Uh, and like in the 1930s, uh, she had like created and organized the peace movement of Ethiopia. Uh, and so like she was based in Chicago, uh, at the time and like the peace movement of Ethiopia, like garnered support and promoted Pan Africanism among like both Africans in major cities such as Chicago, uh, and among, like, thousands of Black Southerners. Um, so, like, uh, the organization was, like, meant to, uh, yeah, just made me push for and organize with Black Americans willing to leave the country uh, to build and develop in Africa. Uh, and she ultimately had around, like, uh, 400,000 uh, signatures of people who are willing to, like, work with her and, like, uh, head out. Uh, to the country. Like, uh, unfortunately, she was arrested, uh, uh, I think, for, like, working with Japan at the time. Uh, so she wasn't able to see it all to fruition. Wow. Mitty Gordon. It, it was, was that there? Was his name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Mitty God, Mitty Maud Lena Gordon is the full name. Yeah, these are people who yeah, never heard. Mm -hmm. this is his name but this is the work she's been doing and just the forces out there to stop the work can't stop mm -hmm. the work even though they try like these examples run far and wide um but it just goes to show you the extent in which we can't depend on the media for our education yeah. like we're not going to get it there yeah
And like an important thing to note is that like at least for all the people for uh both like Dr. Clark and Mitty Gordon and uh like other ancestors, like they're and like Kwame uh Nkrumah, they're doing a lot of organizing like uh in the midst of the Great Depression. So a time when like right. hundreds, if not like thousands of people, if not millions of people were like uh, at home, like hungry, like starving, didn't know what the future lied ahead of them. And we're just like trying to figure out a way to survive. And like in the midst of all of that, like just trying to like organize and like work with other people uh, to support each other is like admirable. Absolutely. The odds were always against them and they, they <laughs> persisted continually. Yeah. And they knew it was because of the masses of the people. Like how we say how Jamila sings in the uh, theme song, we're not a mm-hmm. king or a queen, we're a servant of the people. Like, you know, yeah. We're doing it for the people. And that's what these ancestors did. They did it for the people. It wasn't to have their own pockets lined, um, which is what you often see in the media and the petty bourgeois. I mean, they'll, <laughs> they'll say that they're fighting for some justice, but at the end of the day, they're not going to challenge the system. And yeah. you know, if you're challenging the system, you're a threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly. I mean, that's just what yeah. capitalism is. You challenge the system, they're going to come with all of these different things, but <laughs> all the forces, yeah, all the forces gonna come and conspire, and it's and it's amazing just to see how how far and wide they've done that. Like counter counter uh, counter pro, yeah, that. counter intelligence, go and tell pro, go and tell pro. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, just reading how they've conspired these conspiracies against people and parties and organizations mm-hmm. so that they can break and cause confusion. Um, that just yeah shows you that we got to be aware fine-tuning our analysis daily uh just so that we're not trapped by a lot of those snares but um it's far and wide (laughs) Um, (laughs) but i wanted to ask you um i have a question here just about how does the mass media typically honor our ancestors around this time and what are some of the main focal takeaways they give as opposed to the virtues that they leave out um so i am gonna start off with i guess like one of the positives that the mass media portrays i think like sometimes they portray uh inventions of like a black people uh throughout the country uh i think like at least at least the way that i understood it when i was growing up and like listening to it was that like there are all these like black creators and people who have created things like throughout American history, uh, and contributed to the fabric of American history. Uh, so like, uh, I think like a big person was like, uh, George Washington Carver. Uh, we got to hear like a little bit about at least the name of Marcus Garvey, but not anything ever too deep. Uh, like the people who create the person who created the uh who who helped create the steam engine the person who helped create the light bulb and like helped with like so many other like different inventions uh that we rely on today the traffic light uh i'm pretty sure like the firefighter um i think like the suit or something uh and like a bunch of other yeah like we we've been creative (laughs) <laughs> right. I kind of just have the opinion that a lot of most of what we see have been created by African people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've been creative. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the yeah. minor tribute to that. We never get credit yeah. for it, but the record <laughs> is true. But I think like uh, where it can go to a fault uh, is when the only thing that we that we uh display and hear about is like uh the like inventions uh as opposed to uh like organizing and building and like working towards uh like the improvement of black people as a whole right yeah yeah right and that's the side that you know the organizing aspect the media not going to tell you to organize i mean they gonna mm-hmm. they run away from that notion but obviously that's what we got to do that's what we have to involve ourselves in because that's the only way we can defeat the system. We can't do it through individual efforts, though that's exactly. 
you know, cute to look at to say, oh yeah, I can do. That. I'm gonna start this. Like, <laughs> it's like, and if yeah. you, you know, like, and like we say here, like, and if you don't want to join this organization, then start another organization of your own. Start your own, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's like that's just that. be interest. Just be working towards the needs of African. Yeah, because we got we these things have happened and. You know, history doesn't just stop at a point where it's just like, okay, that happened. It's like we're still seeing, you know, this is an ongoing mm-hmm. struggle. Um, and I think a lot of us get comfortable, especially if you're, again, taking your media from the television or yeah. social media and letting you know, oh, you don't have to do that. Just travel, just sit back. Like, that's not your problem. <laughs> it's like, yeah, just that liberal. Lism really is what it is. Uh, it's <laughs> like, don't take it, just take it easy and sit. They don't have to do nothing, you know, but you need to have that process because it keeps you aware. Like, wait, this is still mm-hmm. going. Like, this is, this hasn't stopped. Like, our ancestors, and this is why it's just, I'm grateful for all of our ancestors, the ones we're speaking of now and the ones that mm-hmm. are just have not been spoken of, but they've done that work. They have, you know, paid the price. Um, and, we are working because they have done the work. And, yeah. And I think whether it's the of them and now we need a, a gift job to the future generations too. Absolutely. It's like we're doing it because they've done it. And the best way we can honor them is to continue that work. And advance it. Right. And uh, that's because it, it's one thing to just be like, oh yeah, I like that. That quote, that's a good quote. Because like, that's why I think <laughs> what happens typically around this time is we, we gloat in our accomplishments because we know we as Africans mm-hmm. have done so much for the world and we've contributed to all these wonderful things. But it gives us mm-hmm. a sense of like, okay, here's a trophy on the wall. We can just admire it and not... Things are fine now. Right, things are fine. Yeah, we just kind of just settle with that. Like, oh, and the, and the industry wants us to just settle, not to, you know, just basically <laughs> incorporate in the capitalist system. They don't want us to continue the legacy of Malcolm X or to continue mm-hmm. the legacy of all these freedom fighters. They rather us feel we can incorporate and be like you know yeah. the projection and you know we see representation it's like yeah that's yeah we see it more of us like oh <laughs> my, i'll never this thought i'd see the day yeah yeah I think we'll see a first such you know xyz and it's like nah you yeah. gotta have um further analysis yeah totally. and like sometimes i feel like to some extent uh things are like designed or like uh at least like advertised or or told in a certain way uh about like a uh, black people in america that like even just like seeing a black person get in cre- getting credit for creating something is like a large advancement for what's been going on over the past 400 years right uh, whereas like like uh at least like knowing about george washington carver is like an accomplishment that like a bunch of people had to like work hard to even like have that be like a uh, continue. Right. So you don't even get to the point of like the organizers or the people who are like uh, creating long-term and trying to create long-term solutions to the problems we face. Right. Yeah. They're just, they're missing in action. They, they don't even talk about them. Yeah. And those are the unsung. And these, this is why we say they're unsung because they're not given the stage mm-hmm. because they're the rebels you know those are the ones that actually burn the plantations like they do credit right <laughs> but we they are <laughs> necessarily yeah. do credit because they actually went against the status quo um and even thinking about mm-hmm. how when we heard of slavery growing up in you know school they don't ever talk about that being a good thing like yeah they got rid of the slave masters it's like oh well there was a rebel there you know a lot of lives were lost <laughs> But it's like, yeah, they yeah. did that because they had to. They, if it wasn't for that type of reaction, mm-hmm. we wouldn't even be here. So we got to acknowledge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't. They don't. And they don't really talk. They don't really talk about uh, paying reparations to the slave owners. Uh, right. Even though that was something that did happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, a bunch of little things that they just forget to tell us. Yeah, and that and that's that goes back to a point where I wanted to mention just how Africa is usually not. I mean, we call it Black History Month, and I understand why a lot of people say Black, you know. But when you go back to Africa, the land of where all you know Africans were from Africa, but that's never talked about. You know, it's like oh, yeah. 
we make it black and we make it black American. What do you think of just the framing of how even I'm sure you know people who I've I could tell mm-hmm. you I don't want to put a number of all the people I know that's like, <laughs> I ain't African, but it's a lot yeah. of them. Like, I ain't African, I'm black. Yeah. Um, what do you think? How does that how do we manage to connect Africa to our identity? Because I mean, that's what this is all mm-hmm. about. So, like, it seems like, uh, especially in the, like, the 90s, well, I think especially in the late 2000s and early, like, 2010s, Mm -hmm. uh, there seemed to be a push against, like, claiming, like, African, like, heritage and claiming a connection to the land itself. Uh, So, like, whether it's through, like, TV shows, or like, uh, the difficulty of like, uh, immigrating to like a different country right. or like any other of the like systematic things that are barriers in terms of like even getting to see what Africa looks like or like setting foot on an African like city. Uh, it creates a, it creates a space where you don't really know like what's even going on. Uh, and then what fills that like lack of knowledge is like a bunch of ideas that like Africans are like, uh, uncivilized, uh, that they have no history, uh, that they've always just been, uh, the, uh, recipient of knowledge and civilization and support. Uh, and not much history is shown about like, uh, what we have contributed, uh, from a civilization standpoint from a humanitarian standpoint um, and like a lot of the ideas that exist. Uh, so I think one of the big ways to, uh, I guess to dispel the idea that like people aren't African uh, is I think what they did in the past. So like uh, increased knowledge about like what Africa is like uh, today and knowledge about what Africa has done and contributed to society. Uh, and make it something that like people are proud of and show how uh and like show and like highlight so many of the links that exist between uh like african american cultures today uh and uh african cultures that exist in uh, in the country uh, in the continent of africa yeah absolutely and you mentioned something that reminds me of um a book we're reading in our um work study about Secretary mm-hmm. Ray talking about dignity. Like I think yeah. more Africans need to have that dignity. And he was just a great expounder of that. Like mm-hmm. you are worthy of this life. Because so much mm-hmm. propaganda has been crafted to just have us not having dignity. Like you're deserving of this beating. You're deserving of not having proper education or housing or whatever else mm-hmm. they bar from us. But when you realize that you are deserving of these things that you don't you can't just be talked to any kind of way that you yeah. have <laughs> when you have that dignity you're more you you, you speak up for yourself and you're not going to allow yeah. the system to just trample the way it does without you taking a principal stand against it so like having yeah having that awareness that just knowing that you come from a place um and you from a people that's conquered yeah. and accomplished um yeah and it's not through and i should also mention this, the problem also that happens that I obviously, I'm sure you probably see this a lot of like mm-hmm. people just say blessings king or queen. Yeah. <laughs> you talked about that earlier. It's like, yeah, king and queen. Yeah. And like, why? Let's be servants of one another. Let's be builders. Or just, mm-hmm. yeah. Like we can be proud of just being normal people. Right. And from Africa. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to be the king and queen of whatever place. Especially when you know what happens with monarchies, like you want to, so you you want to be <laughs> the authority so that you can, have yeah. all these, you know, have this free labor. Um, so yeah, we got to just think of that. But as you said, our history through our ancestors, through the work, these are the things that the system can't kill. Although they will attempt to do so through the reframing, revision of movies. Yeah. And that's why movies, and I know this has been talked about um, from the last podcast briefly with Jamila and Evan, but just seeing all of the movies um, that, and just seeing how that affects looking at social media, you know, I'm going through Twitter and I'm seeing how people really respond to 
what mm -hmm. a company like the movie industry is putting out is like you know whatever they're putting out is crafted intentionally to be formulated to hit those buttons because they yeah. know what makes us cry they know what makes us happy they know what makes mm -hmm. us shout and therefore they're able to turn it around and make it <laughs> you like oh this is change the story a little bit right and then before you know it you're giving credit to the colonizer and you're, you're honoring or respecting the name of something that actually is soiled and yeah and untrue so i mean we got to have that that analysis knowing that whatever we get from the media like more than like i'm not saying you can't enjoy it for the purpose of whatever entertainment value you have for it but mm -hmm. if you're going to take it as true especially if you're not in, in an organization and you just like oh yeah i saw this on the movie or i read this book so i know this must be you know mm -hmm. the truth you can i guess falter in that sense of not knowing who you are and the system doesn't want us to know that we're african yeah because they got all <laughs> not of at all they don't want us to know that so yeah oh we can talk about uh another uh freedom fighter in africa so i think you have like uh patrice lumumba of congo yes yes patrice lumumba um i was just briefly studying on what he accomplished but to see how he was also assassinated um just like this public assassination um but he was yeah he did amazing work and I'm trying to find a quote where he's like african unity and solidarity are no longer dreams they must be expressed in decisions um and i just like that because it's like you know it's one thing to have this dream it's like what are the policies you know the legislative yeah. action that is taking place to make this happen um and i know that just within this work I, that name is always mentioned and i can't wait to study more mm -hmm. about him because i know that this was a freedom fighter to the core like everyone always mentions patrice yeah. Lumumba, patrice Lumumba. so i mean it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah unfortunately he was dropped by uh i think like the american and the belgian government in conjunction with like one of his former allies and then mm -hmm. like that I guess, like, after his death was, like, a huge, like, civil war and wow. then a bunch of conflict that uh, a bunch of, like, American companies profited off of. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a story. Yeah, see, the way they, I mean, oh, uh, we really, there's a quote that um, James Baldwin said, I might butcher it, but it, to some extent he's saying, like, you think history and life is bad, but then you read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, <shoot. laughs> right? it's like, yeah, it's like, man, all of the ways, all of the things that have been done, you know, we have mm -hmm. such a litany of um, information, um, but it, it doesn't have to serve to our detriment because we can see through their example and obviously through the, their struggles of progress that this is the work that has to be continued, which is what we're doing to continue it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And then also I wanted to just highlight briefly um, political prisoners. Uh, they're actively prisoners serving time in all parts of this colonized nation um, for continuing the work. So like they're the, the ones that have passed on. We are the ones carrying it now. And then they're the ones who are still carrying it, who are locked up because of that. So, I mean, this work is a, it's, it's continuing. Um, but to see that there's so many people still locked up for fighting just for using their life as making their life an effort to change and to abolish the system. Um, it comes with all of those forces. But when you realize why we're doing this work, because mm -hmm. the work, I mean, this is a natural progression. This was this was destined to happen anyway, because nothing is going to stay the same. Capitalism is on its final leg. Um, <laughs> late stage capitalism so we see it yeah. doing all these tricks um but we also see the work um and that's that's the most important Definitely. yeah, yeah I, I have a feeling that a lot of the unsung heroes 30 50 years from now are are gonna be are gonna be the people who's fighting today right now yeah we're the I mean, I don't. Well, I was gonna sing that song that that Whitney Houston song. <laughs> we are, the, we are. I believe the children of the future. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but we can. We. I mean, as long as we have the necessity and we understand why, if we're gonna mm -hmm. do work, 
we got to do it together. We got to, you know, join an organization and, and really yeah. have that continual, because this is something that's, you know, the system 24 seven, nonstop, they're giving us this information. Um, so, I mean, it's a process. And I think a lot of people hear that and it's like, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. It's like, man, you know, you just, it's like, well, it's a daily thing. Mm-hmm. But when you realize the work that's been done and the work that's already that we can look forward to doing, I, I, I'm sort of, I don't know, I just, I, I feel inspired. Like, it's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let, what's, what's today about? Let's, let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it day by day, step by step. Right. So thanks everyone for watching. I think we, both me and Winford, can speak of many unsung comrades. There are many, and feel free to comment in the section below, in the comment section below, some of the people that you are inspired by, things you've learned. Um, we're going to continue to do this work. As we always say, please join the organization, Fighting for Justice. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and we can't get that work done if we ain't doing it together. Exactly. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you forwards ever, backwards, never. <laughs> All right. See ya. Yeah.